Well, good morning once more uh, to you all. Hope I find you well and that you're coping uh, with this uh, uh, latest lockdown. I want to read to you uh, from uh, Luke chapter 7. Luke's Gospel chapter 7. And we're going to read just a few verses beginning at verse 11. And this is what it says. And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier. And they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us. And that God hath visited his people. In the gospel narratives there are as i'm sure you know uh, three occasions that we read of when jesus raised the dead uh, to life he raised up the daughter of jairus a ruler of the synagogue an only girl 12 years of age he also raised up his beloved friend, Lazarus, uh, the brother of Martha and Mary. However, he also raised to life the only son of the widow of Nain, which we have recorded here uh, by Dr. Luke, the first of the three to be brought back uh, to life. And the first miracle of the raising of the dead since the days of Elisha, 900 years before Christ. Here we read how that Jesus came and touched the buyer, an open coffin. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he... Jesus delivered him to his mother. In our series on the hands of Christ, I've called this talk Powerful Hands. Hands that could raise the dead. There are other instances, as I've already referred to in the Bible, where dead people have been brought back to life, both in the Old Testament and later in the New Testament, where, for example, Peter and Paul, Christ's apostles, raise the dead and therefore speak to us of God's power over death, and which reminds us that there is life before and after death, whatever people may think. Jesus said in John 11, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Our thoughts today, however, are centred on this miracle of Jesus, which Dr. Luke alone tells us about, in which the powerful touch of the Christ of God uh, brought life back to a widow's only son, who no doubt was the only means of her uh, livelihood in those days. 
besides being the love of her life, without whom her survival would be short-lived. It is a heart-rending account of the divine intervention of Jesus in such a mournful situation and rightly regarded as one of the greatest miracles which he wrought on earth. Well, there is much we could think about in this remarkable incident in the life and ministry of our Lord and Saviour, who came to reveal to us a love of God towards us. But I want us to fo focus very simply and very loosely on the comments of a Bible teacher on this passage in Luke's Gospel who tells us of four special meetings that took place here at the town gate of Nain on the outskirts of Galilee, uh, not far from Nazareth, where Jesus was brought up. First, in the providence of God, two crowds met, one headed for the cemetery outside of the town, sorrowful and sad, led by a weeping widow who was bereft of her beloved son. The other heading for the town itself, led by Jesus and rejoicing in the blessings of the Lord that he shared with them. What a contrast between the two and what a difference it makes when we are walking with Jesus in the light of his word. Second, two only sons met. One was alive but destined to die. The other was dead but destined to live. Jesus, of course, is the only begotten Son of God who came into this world to seek and to save that which was lost by his atoning death on the cross so that he might give life just as he did with this young man whom he raised up in his love and mercy by the power of his word. And this he does spiritually to all who will trust in him I am come, he said, that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Third, two sufferers met. Jesus, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, was able to identify with this widow's heartache and deeply felt for her as he saw her weeping over her dead only son. He came into this fallen world to deal with the source of all pain and sorrow that sin and death has brought into it, which is what we see at the cross as he suffered and died in your place and mine. In my place condemned he stood, sealed my pardon, with his blood. Hallelujah! What a saviour, says a hymn writer. Fourth, two enemies met. Jesus faced death when he confronted this dead young man being carried out of the gate of the town. The last enemy as the Apostle describes it in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 26, and was victorious over it, just as he would be, when after being crucified, he rose again on the third day from the tomb in which he was buried. But isn't this the essence of the Christian message? The death of Christ and his victorious resurrection. Without it, as Christians, we would all still be in our sins, helpless and without hope. Indeed, uh, the faith we have in Christ would be in vain. 
and we were being the most miserable people on this earth. But Jesus overcame death and in him we are victors also. Death has been defeated and though this body that we have now as with the young man Jesus raised will eventually go back to the dust from which it came unless Jesus returns again before we die. A new one awaits us in the place that he has gone to prepare for us where it will never again be subject to the consequences of sin. Where there will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more crying, and no more dying. What powerful hands they are then that reached out and touched this funeral buyer of this young man, raising him up to life again, and given back to his grieving and broken hearted mother, sent as Jesus was to heal the broken hearted. They are the same hands that have reached out to you and reached out to me, bringing us out of death spiritually uh, because of sin into life everlasting. What love, what compassion, what grace he has towards each one of us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, come to you in prayer uh, this morning, thanking you once more for your word and how it encourages us. Thank you for the passage that we've been looking at in the Gospel of Luke. Reminding us of the powerful hands of our Saviour, who is able to raise the dead. We thank you for that uh, glorious prospect that is for Christians, that um, though we may uh, end our days and be buried or cremate, cremated or whatever that um, we have life everlasting and death will not end in the grave but will be the beginning of a new life with a new body shared with our Saviour in heaven so Lord uh, receive our thanks for the Lord Jesus and help us once more to keep looking uh, to him remember today uh, Lord those whom we love those who are our neighbours and our friends uh, those who belong to your people keep them safe watch over them and we pray, Lord, that they may know your loving hand upon them. For we pray and ask this in his name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for listening. And uh, once more, I hope you'll tune in to our next talk on this series of the Hands of Christ.